You know what? Until the announcement that they were going to be remaking Snow White into a live action adaptation and some of these incredibly based comments, I'd not heard of Rachel Zuckerberg. Rachel Zegler. Whatever. But why should you or I or anyone for that matter care about the upcoming release of Snow White and the Seven Dwarf? Just, just singular. This, by the way, uh, for those of you that managed to miss this little gem, uh, is one of the most hilarious pre-release images I've ever seen. Everyone thought this was a meme. Everyone thought this wasn't legit until Disney came out and said, no, no, that's, that's a real picture from the, the production of Snow White. What, why is everyone laughing at us? It looks like Mumford and Sons got lost at the Ren Fair. It looks like the inside of every craft beer bar I've ever been to. They look like they can really tell me the difference between an IPA, a DIPA, and a TIPA. They look... <laughs> they look like... They look like a Dragon, a dragon Quest party. <laughs> okay, that's enough clowning on the circus. And back to the initial point, which is why should you care about the upcoming release of Snow White? And for the most part, you shouldn't. You know, I don't want to tell you really. It's just, it's, it's a live action adaptation of Snow White. Woo! Been dying to see this one. The thing I really can't wrap my head around is who is this movie for? Really? Who is this movie for? Because you'd think, oh, it's for Disney fans. You know, being a Disney adaptation of a Disney movie. But, you know, going off what Rachel Zuckerberg's been saying, that doesn't seem to be the case. I was scared of the original cartoon. I think I watched it once and then I never picked it up again. Like, <laughs> I'm being so serious. She's not gonna be safe with the prince and she's not gonna be dreaming about true love. It's no longer 1937. <laughs> Dude, she could not be more diplomatic about despising Snow White if she tried. People like Miss Zuckerberg. Zegler. Whatever. They write Snow White off as outdated. It's no longer 1937. <laughs> and now morally taboo, yet they won't hesitate to throw on the dress and embody the very thing that they claim to be so outdated and evil. If I'm gonna stand there 18 hours in a dress of an iconic Disney princess, I deserve to be paid for every hour that it is streamed online. Even if you morally lobotomize a production that you claim to be old fashioned, you're still looking to financially benefit from the clout that comes along with that established piece of media. The irony is that the practice of hollowing out something that you claim to be old fashioned and then transplanting your own morals into it is, I don't know, that sounds pretty immoral in itself. That's like a politician coming along and saying, you know how, uh, you know how old fashioned and evil the Third Reich was? Well, guess what? I've made a fourth one. That'll show them. To further illustrate my point, allow me to now perform to you a short play that I've been writing over the last 10 years or so that I've decided to title trying to enjoy Disney as an adult in 2023. I have a biscuit. Boy, I sure do like biscuits. And, and I can't wait to eat this biscuit. I have taken your, your biscuit. Disney, why, why have you taken my biscuit? Because I want to make it better. But I like that. But the, the, the structural integrity, it's, it's ruined. You, Disney, you've, you've spoiled my biscuit and I won't eat it. Well, didn't make it for you anyway. And also, when did Disney get to get over this whole, we make new, modern, shiny productions by doing the same old shit? I mean, at this rate, in a couple of years, Disney are just going to be sat in a cinema, alone, patting themselves on the back, whilst everyone else in the world is off watching a different movie. All jokes aside, why should you care about the live-action Snow White? Well, I mean, the lead actor in this production is the perfect indictment of the modern Disney paradox. The disavowing whilst simultaneously endorsing, acting spitefully and without morals whilst also preaching morality. Disney are constantly screaming about how they're older and better. Movies are so bad. They even put a disclaimer at the start of some of their classic animations. This program includes negative depictions and or mistreatment of people or cultures. These stereotypes were wrong then and they are wrong now. Rather than remove this content, we want to acknowledge its harmful impact, learn from it, and spark conversation to create a more inclusive future together. Disney is committed to creating stories with inspirational and aspirational themes that reflect the rich diversity of the human experience around the globe. To learn more about how stories have impacted society, visit www.disney.com forward slash stories matter. Wow. I don't think there's ever been a URL that I've been less excited to visit than that one. <laughs> that 
That sounds really unfun. You know, I don't like to be a guy who operates on extremes, but I feel like it's one or the other. You either think something's bad, you put it down, and you don't seek to make a penny from it, or you think it's good, and you do. You can't have it both ways. Come on, Disney. Let's be honest with one another. You don't charge people $7.99 a month to, what was it, uh, spark conversation about a new inclusive future. Have a day off, will you? Come on. We all know why you charge $7.99. And that ain't the reason. And it's the same with Richard Zuckerberg. Rachel Zegler. Yeah, yeah, okay. It's the same with her. A lot of people have postulated that she's become Brie Larson 2.0 because she's an insufferable girl boss. I will elbow everyone out of the way. <laughs> now, while that might be the case, almost certainly the case, but while that might be the case, it's also because she is literally a walking metaphor for modern Disney. She'll look down upon, she'll spit upon the original, but she'll happily cash that Snow White check, don the dress and sing along whining and preaching the whole way. If I'm gonna stand there 18 hours in a dress of an iconic Disney princess, I deserve to be paid for every hour that it is streamed online. I do also want to address a sentiment that I have heard every now and then about uh, Rakeem Butterworth. Rachel Zegler. Oh, but she comes from a musical theater background and she's a really good singer and performer. Do you know what? That's wonderful. That's, that's just spiffy. That's great, but if the guy who's fixing my sink stops fixing my sink to come and hit me over the head with a morality mallet, guess what? He's not a very good plumber. Are you toasting my bagel? You know what I'm saying right now. She's not gonna be safe with the prince and she's not gonna be dreaming about true love. This is a weird one as well. What's wrong with true love? What's so bad about that? Isn't that one of life's most noble pursuits? Isn't that the end goal for a lot of people? To share with and to provide for someone other than yourself? To find emotional fulfillment within the incredibly humbling idea that there is someone out there willing to share their entire life with you. The most important, most valuable thing a human has to offer another, and they're willing to give it to you solely on the premise that there's a possibility that you feel the same way. Now nah, we got rid of that. True love, Blech. come on, no one wants that. <laughs> Who wants to be in love? Not me, <laughs> definitely not me, I'm so alone. You sound like a child, what is wrong with you? What, you want a medal for being an eight-year-old? No! It don't work like that. And not to sound like Paris Hilton or something, but what is she wearing? She looks like she's wearing like a sexy Harry Hill Halloween outfit. I've also just noticed as well, why is Gal Gadot just staring at her like that? Unflinching. These, oh man, these people are such goofballs. Uh, I must say that for me, also the transition for the old hag. You that were in and the chair for like four hours. Four hours and... <laughs> Actually, now I come to think of it, when the old hag appears at the window, that right there, that is a 1930s jump scare right there. Ah, <laughs> uh, I hope for the live action adaptation turns into the old hag, they just yoink Gal Gadot off stage and quickly swap in Kathleen Kennedy. <laughs> That'd be terrifying! She's not gonna be safe with the prince and she's not gonna be dreaming about true love. She's dreaming about becoming the leader she knows she can be. Okay, that. That is one of the stupidest things I've ever heard in an interview. Snow White contained a number of moral wisdoms, things such as the fact that you can find friends in unlikely places, the fact that jealous people will often be willing to manipulate you in order to get what they want. Uh, you know, when it comes to becoming a leader and the importance of stepping up, sure, that can be an important character development, but can someone, anyone, please tell me what on earth that has to do with the story of Snow White. I mean, that, that is just beyond irrelevant. It's like me saying, hey, you know what? I want to I want to remake Pride and Prejudice. But rather than, you know, Elizabeth falling in love and through doing so learning to become less judgmental, I want to explore her burning desire to become a badminton instructor in Cuba. Why on earth would I need a Jane Austen novel to explore that concept? And why do you feel like you need Snow White? Oh yeah, it's because it's already established. It's already done all of the hard work for you. And with all of this creative free time that you have, you instead spend that time prancing around, complaining to people much poorer than you that you should be able to demand various payments because you've stood there in a dress one time. If I'm gonna stand there 18 hours in a dress of an iconic Disney princess, I deserve to be paid for every hour that it is streamed online. Do you know what? I miss arrogant people. I miss obnoxious, unapologetically abrasive people. Because at least that's honest. You know, I, Lord knows I can't stand this fake, 
I care. Type attitude that you get flying about all the time at the moment. Oh, please. It's just a bunch of boring actors who've seen a bunch of people get called out on Twitter for being douchebags that when the spotlight shines on them, they pretend to be all kind and thoughtful. Come on now. I, I prefer someone who is straight up an asshole and owns it than someone who pretends to be worldly. For me, what drew me to the material? First of all, I'm all about the people. So for the record, she was asked what drew her to Snow White and her answer was... The people. What people? Imagine there's no heaven. Imagine all the people. I get it now. Oh, gal. Gal, you've reached out and touched me. I understand what people you mean now, Gangadot. She truly is the Plato of our era. Especially when you play a villain and that type of a villain. She was the first villain ever. Ah, oh, no. It's Jennifer Lawrence all over again. I remember when I was doing Hunger Games, nobody had ever put a woman in the lead of an action movie yeah. because mm -hmm. it wouldn't work. Oh, my goodness, these people. They are just such trailblazers, oh my goodness. But I think there's something so special about Snow White. That the fact that it's about the humanity and it's about nature as well. I, do you know, I won't lie. It, it's, it's been a minute since I've seen the original Snow White. It, it's been many years, but uh, is that, was that what it was about? Was that, was that a theme? Nature? Uh, I mean, I guess the dwarves mine. I guess that's uh, more of a vocation than a, a through line, though. I don't know. I might be wrong about that one. That doesn't ring a bell, but uh, oh my god. Imagine if they made the live action Snow White one of those just stop oil activists. <laughs> That'd be Pete Disney. It's a beautiful story about an amazing girl who wants to find the true self of yeah. hers. Ah! She definitely wanted to say true love then, but then realized she couldn't because of what Brie Larson 2.0 had said. She's not going to be dreaming about true love. Oh man, Brie Larson is going to be so happy when she sees all of this. It's, do you know what? It's about time as well. It's about time we had a new girl boss Jesus. I think I watched it once and then I never picked it up again. <laughs> like, I'm being so serious. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's, that sounds about right. Sounds about par for the course. You know, Zockmaster getting the role as Snow White. It, it's the equivalent of, like, imagine going for a job at Starbucks. You sit down and they ask you the question. So, why is it that you want to work at Starbucks? And you turn around and say, oh, well, you know what? A number of years ago, I came here and I bought a coffee and it was really bad and I've never been back since. Do you know what? You sound perfect for this job. Now, this will be surprising to you, I know, but I am no casting director. But if I was hiring for a new adaptation, sure, acting prowess and like, you know, suitability for the role, that'd be right up there. But right underneath that would be so, what is your opinion on the source material? And if their answer would be, I don't really have one, or I don't like it, that would be the time when I'd be like, yeah, you, you know what, thank you for your time, but I, th I think I'm going to see someone else now. So, in conclusion, why do people hate Rudolf Hess? I think it's because she's very whiny. I deserve to be paid for every hour that it is streamed online. At least to me, she seems to be one of these people who's kind of fake nice. You know, one of these people that thinks that smiling all the time makes you immune from being wrong or being a dick. That couldn't be further from the truth. And most importantly, she doesn't seem to like the story that's paying her bills right now. Taylor's oldest time in Hollywood, eh? But that's a whole different Disney movie altogether, isn't it? Thank you for watching this video. Hopefully I'll see you in the next one. But until then, take care. And as always, a big shout out to the patrons and the channel members, the top tiers, the Knights of Law, Flunky, Pozzabon, Infinite Dundum, Cos, Jax, David, ATS, Texas Lawman, Michael, Michael Terpia, Steve the Goat, David, Digital EXE, Saint Nemo, Daggerd69, nice. And of course, Canada Dog Ramachi. To you guys, the Knights of Law, I thank you for your service. The Tier 2s, Sayi, Dr. Melsky, Yonwich, Hadzi, Mark Maiden, Sensei, Fang, Mendicum, Bias, Michael S, Rich Walwick, Nastagmus, Magkar and Jarek, and the Grand Admiral. And of course, a big thank you to all of the Tier 1s as well. So everyone on this list, thank you very much for your support. It really does mean the world to me. Thank you. And there we go. Another day, another video. Will you join me for my next one? You better do, you little... Disney animated bitch. But until then, take care of yourselves and I'll see you very soon.